Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and first of all I want to congratulate Mercedes on yet another year of dominating and ending the F1 season with yet another World Championship Constructors title. And of course Lewis Hamilton on securing a sixth World Championship Drivers title making him one of the best F1 drivers of all time at least on paper. I've got to admit I followed F1 for years and was never a fan of Lewis in his early days but there's no denying that along his journey he's made the right choices and won in a car that hasn't always been the best. He never gives up and I think his personality has matured over the years. So I thought to congratulate all of them I would make a scale FPV Formula One car. Now when I first had this idea I thought there would be an abundance of scale RC F1 cars but it turns out that it's really niche and DIY. You can't buy hobby grade ready to run RC F1 cars with scale aero and decals and I think it's perhaps because there would be a licensing issue. In any case you can get one of these off Amazon or the F1 store which is kind of a toy meant to be left in its box to admire which presents some problems for my idea. The car itself runs off just two AAA batteries equaling to three volts which is not going to produce a lot of power. And there's a head where my camera needs to be. The controller is also running off 27 megahertz so I have no idea if it will have enough range. Either way let's see if I can turn this mantelpiece toy into a big boys toy. So as you can see the thing is screwed down to the box as if it's never meant to come out of it. It's even got this piece of track printed onto the box and it looks very nice but I would rather have it running as an FPV car. So it does take another two AAA batteries for the controller and it's going to have a very long antenna because it's running off 27 megahertz as you can see here so the first thing to do is to unscrew it from this box and see what I can do next. Just as I suspected the two screws underneath are just to secure the car to the box confirming that it's never meant to leave it. It's actually a really nice model let's take a look underneath so we have got a battery bay here with a screw in it so I'm gonna have to take that out. My idea is to put a 1S LiPo in this place and I imagine there's a divider there for the AAA batteries so I'm gonna have to cut all of that out. I like that there is a switch to turn it on and off. Hopefully I'm going to be able to remove the helmet and fit an FPV camera there but also utilize the on and off switch so that the camera turns off with the car. Yeah there's not a lot of room in there at all and unfortunately this isn't removable so I'm gonna have to get destructive and cut out this divider. So that was pretty simple. My next plan is to use one of the springs for the AAA batteries to secure in this old Hubson 1S 600 milliamp LiPo using a lozzy connector because the battery cover requires a screw for it to stay in place and of course I want to be swapping the batteries out quite a lot so that's in there quite nicely and I've also tucked in for now the spring on the other side and we've got some holes here so that I can have a micro lozzy connector feed through to here fingers crossed. The next barrier is going to be this decal here because as far as I can see everything will come apart fine but this decal is going across the divider here so I'm going to take a blade to that and hopefully be able to retain the decal and take everything apart. So I think that's done the job because the knife is going straight through the logo. So the next thing to do is to remove these four screws. And I also think these two screws at the front for the wing. I don't think the back wing has anything to do 
with this top part coming off. So let's try that next. So all of the screws are out, but the front wing is still on for some reason. Ah, that just lifts off. So at the moment of truth, let's see if this thing comes apart. Oh, look at that, you see? Cutting through the Blackberry label has worked, but it's like something is stuck, something at the front. Is there another screw, or will that just lift off? Ah, there we go. Look at that, sports fans. So, it looks actually pretty simple. We've got the 27 megahertz antenna attached to the body, but other than that, I think I can work with it. So, taking a closer look, we have got the VBAT going from the AAA battery bay to the switch, and then out from the switch to this VBAT pad on here, and then we've got the negative from the AAA battery bay going to this ground pad over here. So, what I'm hoping to do is to take the corresponding micro lozzy and solder it up to the positive and negative here so I've got this switch and then I can take my all-in-one camera that I've got here it's just a tiny whoop camera this is actually one of the ones that has got video in and video out so what I've had to do is cut those two cables off and then twist them and solder them together because obviously we need the video in and out connected and there's not going to be an on-screen display there but if I then solder up the positive to there and the negative to there then when the switch is in the off position it should also turn the camera off and Good news underneath because there is just a screw that is keeping the helmet on but it's also got this wedge here and there is a little hole there so I could perhaps even feed my wires through without having to cut anything off. So I'm going to get all of that soldered up and see how I get on. Okay, so I've done all of that. The first thing I did was feed the lozzy lead from this side through a tiny gap that is on the positive side where the AAA battery sits. You can't do it from this side because the connector is too large. Then I have soldered the positive up to the VBAT and also the ground. You might be thinking, why didn't I solder it directly to the switch? And the answer is in case I want to ever power the car up from the AAA batteries. Then I was correct in assuming that the cockpit comes out. The helmet is just held on with a screw. So I have fed the lead from the FPV camera through the tiny hole there and then I have soldered it up to the VBAT and also soldered the ground to the ground pad so when I switch on the car it should power up the car and the camera and also turn them off at the same time. So all that's left to do is put this back together and figure out how to mount the camera. You can see that when the cockpit is in place, there is a tiny gap for the leads for my camera to go through. It's almost as if they wanted me to FPV this thing. Well, everything is finished and I've put it back together. I ended up using a black rubber cement to secure the camera in. It's not permanent, it's a little bit like blue tack, but a lot stronger in case I ever want to return the car to its former glory, but I doubt that will be the case. So now I just need to find a suitable venue. So it's been three days since I finished building the car and on the same day I took it to an indoor sports hall to record the video. So we are in Adobe Premiere and I used a GoPro to get exterior shots of the car and then I'm using my Fat Shark HDOs along with the Rapid Fire module to record the DVR footage of the FPV feed. Now from the very start I said to myself if all of this works then I'm going 
going to dub proper F1 sounds over the top of it because it should be pretty easy for me having around 15 years of audio engineering experience. And on a couple of occasions, Formula One has visited some cities and closed off the roads to put on a PR performance, which is perfect for my video because first of all, they use old F1 cars with V8 and V10 engines. No guesses to why they do that. And second of all, they are mostly spinning up the wheels or doing donuts, which is about as exciting as Formula One gets these days, unfortunately. And there are plenty of stock sounds of the exterior and interior of those events for me to map to my video. So I wanted to create that kind of video rather than just driving around and the 1S LiPo that I put in there didn't give me a choice anyways because despite the wheels being made of rubber the floor was really dusty so there was zero grip and it was so difficult to get it going in a straight line. I actually only really managed that when the LiPo started to deplete. Something else I wanted to do was to have noticeable gear changes, but the controller's throttle is either on or off, so that was really difficult. But I'm glad I had a go at it because it made the gear changes much easier to map to the sounds. By the way, if you are wondering why the DVR is sped up by 0.12% it's because the Fat Shark DVR drops a couple of frames even when in close proximity like this so to sync it up to the GoPro 0.12% usually does the trick. So I got all of the sound how I wanted it and was all ready to export it but then I thought how cool would it be to have the hands and the steering wheel move with the wheels of the car? If I hide this video track, you can see what it looks like without the hands. So, how did I do it? Well, if I bring the top video back and go to the effects panel, I created a mask which crops around the cockpit of a hot lap that Hamilton did at Silverstone some years ago. I then used Adobe After Effects to track the steering wheel to the front wheels of the RC car. So if I disable the mask altogether, you will see the original hot lap, which will look pretty weird when I press play because it will be moving forwards and backwards in some places and skipping but of course you don't see that once everything is masked. I did have to chop it up in a couple of places because the DVR went black and white for a few frames so of course the wheel also has to do the same. I won't go through all of the things that I did in After Effects because that will be an hour long video on its own. The tracking of course does help but it does get it wrong and you still have to manually correct a lot of the keyframes. So the edit still took around 20 hours in total and a 20 hour edit isn't too bad. My normal review edits usually take around 16 hours. And some of you might be thinking, why did I spend that much time on this video when I could be reviewing some awesome new products? And the answer to that is because sometimes I need a change or a new challenge and this was one of them. So now you know how it was done, I'll show you the edit in full and after that I'll conclude the video. Right, so let's turn this guy on. Hopefully I should get a red light on the camera. Now, pretty slippy in here, so they get the tires heated up.
would I recommend doing this yourself? I would say probably not for one reason and that is the range. So it says on the box that the range with the 27 megahertz system is good for 30 meters which should easily cover the entire space of the indoor sports hall. However, I was struggling to get 50 feet and then it would just cut out and the throttle is basically a button and so is the steering so it's either on or off same with reverse now the 1s lipo did give it a lot of power in fact too much power because it was just skidding all over the place there was no grip whatsoever something that i would recommend though is the emax interceptor this thing is absolutely superb and it has got proportional steering and also proportional throttle and it's very cheap so i will definitely link to this one in the description and there will be a review of this coming soon i hope you enjoyed watching this video i had a lot of fun making this guy and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers